Welcome back. We will now dive into the details of NSP's telemetry-based optimization. There are two types of telemetry-based optimization supported today. The first is utilization-based telemetry, which allows you to run your network at high capacities, reducing the probability of congestion-related discards. This makes use of measured link and LSP bandwidths. The second is latency-based telemetry, which is used when slices or services need to be routed over a low latency path. This makes use of measured link latencies. The best operational beha behavior is achieved when separate LSPs are used for these type of telemetry-based optimization. There are several design considerations that enable effective closed-loop control. You should avoid polling too quickly overloading the nodes, the NSP CPU, and causing LSPs to move around too often. You should also avoid pulling too slowly, slowing down the reaction to events in the network, causing spikes in NSP CPU consumption and resulting in the need to move more LSPs. Thresholds should also be tuned appropriately. If they are too stringent, there will be too many LSPs to move trying to achieve this ideal distribution. If they are too loose, customer SLAs, they may be exceeded. There also shouldn't be strict rules in the algorithms. These cause thrashing of LSPs as they move back and forth between links. The algorithms also should not be too loose um, where the LSPs aren't treated equally. NSP uses gRPC as the preferred mechanism to retrieve telemetry information. It is fast, efficient, and eliminates polling. Other mechanisms need to be used in certain cases. The NSP flow collector is used to gather LSP statistics from the 7250 Gen 1 routers, as there is no native support for LSP statistics. Some routers do not support gRPC. For those, SNMP must be used. The results of dynamic latency tests are retrieved currently through gRPC. We will be supporting the retrieval through BGPLS in 2022. The remainder of this presentation focus on, focuses on utilization-based telemetry. Many of these concepts apply to latency-based telemetry, but latency doesn't change that often, so it doesn't need the level of control that is needed for utilization-based telemetry. How do you choose which LSP or LSPs to reroute when a link exceeds a desired utilization? There can be many LSPs on that link, and they can all have different impact on the outcome. We don't want to make small micro-adjustments that overload the network without making significant impact. We don't want to move too many having a large impact on the network. We also don't want to target in on the most ideal um, or the least ideal LSPs to move. So the first technique uses separate trigger and target thresholds. This provides a mechanism to avoid trying to make small changes. The higher trigger threshold starts the process of moving LSPs. The lower target threshold is the goal to reach. By default, they are both at 80%, but you may want to examine adjusting them. If there is a single LSP that can be moved to reduce the link usage from the current utilization to the target threshold, it's the one that will be chosen to move. Otherwise, multiple LSPs summing to a sufficient bandwidth will be chosen. The second technique is focused on achieving balance when large parts of your network are at close to full capacity. If you have exceeded the trigger threshold and can't reroute an LSP due to their constraints, a temporary change is made to the LSP to drop the requested bandwidth to zero and changing the objective of that LSP to use the Bell Labs proprietary STAR algorithm to find a path through the network with the most available bandwidth while not taking too long of a path. Note that other traffic engineering constraints on that LSP will still apply, and the LSP may still stay on the congested path. The third technique is controlling the priority ordering of LSPs. A weighted combination of factors is used to determine which is the best LSP to pick. 
path lifetime. Paths that have just been rerouted won't be preferred for being rerouted right away. Path bandwidth. Proximity to the excess bandwidth, which is the difference between the current utilization and the target threshold, will make an LSP preferred. This makes single LSP the rerouting choice. Path latency. If the LSP has an objective of latency, or it has a max latency constraint, they will be less likely to be chosen to move. There may be few paths through the network that will keep the latency low enough. As suggested earlier, it is better to use separate LSPs using latency-based optimization for these LSPs instead of utilization-based optimization. Setup priority. High priority paths won't be rerouted as often. Previously unsuccessful reroutes. LSPs which have recently failed to reroute won't be rerouted soon. The fourth technique is to control the rate of LSP changes. We deliberately try to slowly move traffic away by moving LSPs one at a time until we can measure the link utilization drop. This is done as a background process to make sure high priority reroutes due to link failures take precedence. All of these techniques combine to provide you with a stable closed loop control system that optimizes the network in real time. Thank you.